Hey cruisers, welcome back to Cruise Report. This is our cruise review of the Sun Princess. Some of you may already know that we spent 16 nights aboard Sun Princess on a transatlantic cruise from Southampton, England, all the way back to Fort Lauderdale. This was supposed to be a 16-night sailing. It actually turned out to be an 18-night sailing uh, before we got back to Fort Lauderdale because of Hurricane Milton. Uh, we got delayed. We had to stay out at sea for a couple of extra days because the Coast Guard had closed the port Everglades and was they were not allowing any ships to come in. So we did spend a considerable amount of time on board the ship. Now, I do want to make a couple of things clear. When we got back into Fort Lauderdale, uh, Princess had a kind of a media reveal. This was the first time the ship had been in the United States. So they had a bunch of influencers, TikTok people, YouTube people, uh, not us, but they did have some other invited guests, travel agents, media on board the ship for like a three night sailing, probably a sailing to nowhere. And they revealed you know, about the ship. And many of you have probably seen some of those videos. They did a big drone show. They did fireworks, you know, all the typical stuff they do uh, when a new ship comes to the United States. And Ricky and I watched a few of these videos from some of these YouTubers and these TikTokers. And I guess you do you call them TikTokers? I'm not really sure <laughs> what they're called, but um, influencers, we'll just call them influencers. And we were sitting there looking at each other saying, wow, they had a completely different experience than we had. We don't usually like to do these two, three day junket style cruises like what happened after we got off the ship because it doesn't give us enough time to really evaluate the cruise. And also, when they do these events on board a cruise ship, they tailor a lot of things for media that they don't do for regular guests. So it's not the same experience you're going to have when you get on the ship. What we experienced during the 16 to 18 or 18 nights, I'll just go ahead and call it 18 nights, that is what you're going to experience on board the ship with a few caveats. Trust me when I say you can kind of discount everything you may have seen in anybody that was on that ship for two or three days. So let's get into the ship itself. Okay, first of all, Everybody has said on all these videos, and I and we pretty much agree, it's a beautiful ship. Okay, Princess did a very nice job with the decor. It's a beautiful ship. They do a good job of uh, navigating around the ship. There's a lot of elevators. There's, I believe, three different banks of elevators, and each elevator lobby has six elevators. So that's 18 elevators, and then there's two at the very back of the ship. So there's a total of 20 elevators on board Sun Princess. So there's a lot of elevators, and, and, and it needs it. Okay, it's a big ship. I think it's designed to hold about 4,400 people. There were 4,500 and some odd, a few people, 4,500 plus on our cruise, which I was really shocked on a transatlantic cruise. There were that many people, but it was full. The ship was full. So we can tell you what it's like sailing on Sun Prince when it's full. The videos that I saw from the people on the media travel agent thing, it didn't look full to me. It didn't look anything like what we experienced. Let's talk about what was going on during this cruise. And I am a little disappointed in one thing. We booked this cruise intentionally. Because uh, this ship had all kinds of challenges when it first came out, okay? Uh, they decided to do away with Part 19, and, th you know, they've gone through a lot of changes. They're renaming things. They're changing their dining. They've just had all kinds of uh, 
it's like the ship was not thought through very well. It's like they, they just didn't plan it. I don't know what happened, but there's a lot of changes. Even now, there's still a lot of changes going on. And unfortunately, there's things that they changed after we got back in regards to venues uh, that we didn't get to experience. So we're not able to really tell you. If you go on board Sun Princess right now, you may see some things we didn't get to see because they changed them after we got back. Deck 19 uh, was under deconstruction during our cruise. They had crews up there with cranes and everything taking down all the sky ride stuff and all the, I, get, I don't know what you call it. I call it a sky ride. But all of these uh, ropes, courses, and things, those were all being torn apart and removed while we were on board the ship. In fact, some people uh, told us that it was very noisy during certain parts of the day. They, you know, they'd go out on their balcony, they could hear all these hammers and, you know, tools and everything. So we didn't have that problem. We were kind of midship, so we didn't hear any of that. However, I will tell you the public spaces on this ship are rather small compared to the other Princess ships we've sailed on. So we've sailed on Island Princess, we've sailed on Royal Princess twice, and we've sailed on Discovery Princess and on Majestic Princess. Now, Majestic and Discovery are pretty much the same platform, uh, given, you know, with the exception of some interior design elements. Then, of course, Sun Princess, which is this newest platform, this sphere-class ship. There's another ship coming out next year that's in this same class of vessel. But the public spaces on this ship were noticeably smaller than they were on the previous ship, the Discovery Princess. And what that does is, when the ship is full, the spaces get very crowded. We were surprised, really, by how crowded this ship felt. It probably one of the most crowded feelings that we've had on any ship. Mega ship, small ship, doesn't matter. Crowds on board these venues. For example, we would go sometimes to Princess Live to play trivia. You'd have to show up an hour ahead of time because there's nowhere to sit. And even if you showed up an hour ahead of time, there were people still sitting there from the previous event that was being held there, and there was just nowhere to sit. I, I showed this in some of my videos that I shot from the ship. So it was very, very crowded. The Piazza area is very chaotic because on Sun Princess, it is an entertainment venue. So it's always pretty crowded as well. So there's Zumba classes going on, there's dance classes, there's all kinds of entertainment going on in that Piazza. So if you are seated at a bar or a lounge around the Piazza, you're constantly bombarded with noise. It's a very noisy place, whether you're having pizza at Alfredo's Pizza, or you're up at the Crooner's Bar, or you're at Bellini's on uh, on the on the deck, the same the lowest deck. Uh, it it's just almost almost annoying. It's just that it it is a very noisy ship on the interior. The only exception to that is the Good Spirits Bar that we found, and maybe the Wheelhouse Bar to some extent. The Wheelhouse Bar is small, and uh, it, while it's not that noisy, there's a lot of traffic going down to Horizon's dining room. So, but it gets crowded too. Good Spirits is tiny. It only holds like 40 people. Very, very small and hard to find. It's, it's actually on deck seven forward, I think, uh, starboard side. There's also a, an issue in the piazza where the, the marble floor, as beautiful as it is, there's a slight elevation as you step up onto the round area of the piazza and it's almost impossible to see. The marble is so shiny and so slick that you really don't see it, and it's very, very easy to trip or stumble on that little elevation area. Uh, I watched one morning as I was having coffee at Coffee Currents, I watched three different people stumble, and two of them fell. One of them spilled his coffee all over the place. Another gentleman actually fell down, had to be helped up. And there was another threshold going from the Piazza area back to the shop, the little shops. And somebody tripped on that threshold and had to be taken to medical. So they've got some issues. 
I mean, there's no doubt they need to address some of these things. Now, the outer decks, the outer space of the ship are very spacious. There's lots of loungers, plenty of space outdoors. We never saw uh, the Deck 17, Deck 18. We never saw it full. It was There was always a place to sit. We did go take a look at the sanctuary. We did not do the sanctuary. This is the first time we've been on a Princess cruise where we did not go to the sanctuary. And the reason we didn't go to the sanctuary is just, in our opinion, is just overpriced. It's just a little too expensive. $100 for a day. Um, and, you know, we're not going to stay out there for the whole day. We're just, you know, we might want to go out there for two or three hours. We used to be able to buy a half a day. They, they did away with that. And, uh, you know, I hope, I wish them luck. I hope they're able to sell it. I noticed all the cabanas when we went up there were empty. The cabanas, I think they're getting four or $500 a day. I mean, I, I don't know. It just seems... It seems overpriced to me. I will say the ship was very smooth. We didn't have any issues with the sailing. It was a very stable, solid ship, even though we were trying to get away from Hurricane Kirk on the way over, and then we were running right into Hurricane Milton uh, when we got over into the uh, closer to the United States. Uh, ship was rock solid. We felt maybe a little bit of motion one day, but not much. Very, very stable, very solid ship. We did have an issue with our medallion, the little medallions that you get when you get on board the ship, and these are used kind of like a room key. You basically can wear it around your neck. You can clip it on your shirt. You just have to have it with you so you can get back in your stateroom. And as soon as you get within 10 feet or 8 feet of the stateroom, the little panel outside the room recognizes you, and it will unlock the door so you can get in your stateroom. We did have an issue with the medallions. They didn't work all the time in some of the bars and lounges. Sometimes you'd have to take it off and actually touch it to the little uh, reader so that it would recognize it. And after about 10 days, our battery started to die. So we ended up having to go down to guest services and get new medallions. I'm not sure why they can't make the batteries last longer than that. But I will have to say, when it comes to embarkation on this ship, it was super, super fast. We did have the green lane. We had our medallions with the green lane, and we were on board the ship literally 10 minutes after we arrived at the port. That was very, very well handled, very well done. Now, I've got a separate video, and I'll put a link to it up here in the corner of this video, where I do a walkthrough of our cabana mini suite. We were on the 12th deck, 12415, on the starboard side of the ship. And uh, I'm not going to get into that in this video, because I've got that walkthrough video, but I will tell you that I feel like the staterooms on board Sun Princess is where they really did a good job. This is where I, I see the biggest uh, advantage of this ship over the previous Princess ships we've been on. We, the sh we still think the shower is a little bit small for what they call a mini-suite, but it was larger than what you would get on the other Princess ships, and it did have the glass door. No more shower curtains on board Sun Princess. That's a huge improvement. Let me talk about the Wi-Fi for a second. Not very pleased with the Wi-Fi. They claim this is the fastest Wi-Fi at sea, and that's not my experience. No matter where I was, whether I was in my stateroom, whether I was at coffee, uh, coffee currents, no matter where I was on the ship, Wi-Fi, I thought, was very average speed, especially for Starlink. We've used Starlink before. We were just two or three weeks before this cruise, we were on Silver Sea. They had Starlink, and it was much, much faster. I'd say three to four times faster than what we were getting on Sun Princess. Now, that could be because there's 4,500 people on board. I don't know. But I'm telling you right now, I get up early. I'd be down there at Coffee Currents at 5.30 before they opened. And not been, nobody down there. And internet was slow. When it comes to activities, uh, Princess does a good job with their activities. They got something going on all around the ship all day long. You do still get a printed patter in your stateroom, which I thought is nice. I like that. I like having that printed patter. However, it is jam-packed with things going on all over the ship. And probably 50% of the of the items that are listed are things where they're trying to get you to spend money. They're 
bingo or their jewelry, talking about watches, or their things or spa promotions. There are all kinds of things designed to get you to spend money. Maybe it's a wine tasting that they're promoting. You know, there's a lot of different stuff on there, and it, it clutters up the patter to the point that if you just want to see, okay, when is trivia? When is uh, some kind of contest out by the pool or whatever? It makes it hard to find because you're having to sift through all this other information. So I wish they would have a better way of organizing the, the activities during the day so that you don't have to sift through all of these sales opportunities. But they do have a lot of games. They have a lot of dance classes. I mentioned the piazza. They do a lot of things out in the piazza. And it gets crowded during the day. Walking from, say, the elevator, the midship elevators, up to Princess Life, you sometimes have to weave through people because they're, the, the piazza is full of people doing a dance lesson or something. So that gives it a very crowded feeling. I've already talked about how crowded it feels, and this ship does feel crowded. Now, one place on the ship that was not crowded, which was kind of surprising to us, was the casino. It has a huge casino, lots of different table games, all your different, you know, blackjack, craps, roulette, lots of slot machines. And I'm telling you that over 18 days, we walked through there more than a dozen times. We played there a little bit. You know, once we lose our limit, we're done, uh, which was pretty quick. But the uh, casino was never full. It was never more than half full. And most of the time, I'd say a quarter full, there were there was just nobody in the casino. And even though there was very few people, or were very few people in the casino, very heavy smell of smoke. And I really think Princess, I know they're rethinking this for Star Princess. They really need to rethink this smoking policy uh, on the casino, because I think the, it, it kept us out. We went in there one time, we were going to play. Cigarette smoke smell was so bad, we just left. It was just it was oppressive. Now, let me talk about entertainment real quick. Overall, entertainment, very good. The production shows were excellent, I thought, for Princess. But certainly better than we've seen in the past on Princess. I thought it was a step up. Dancers were excellent. Singers were excellent. You know, we, we really enjoyed the entertainment. The downside to the entertainment and the production shows is the theater. The Princess Arena is simply not big enough for this ship. 4,500 people on board, and I think the Princess Arena maybe holds 900 to 1,000. I mean, it, it just... So what they have to do is uh, they have two shows a night. You have to get there at least an hour ahead of time to get a seat, or at least to get the seat you want. If you get there, say, 15, 20 minutes before the show, you're just going to have to sit wherever you can because everybody's going early to get a seat because the theater's too small. It's sort of a semi-in-the-round type theater. Great sight lines, except for a few places where there's some posts. But overall, no matter where you sit, you get good sight lines, great sound, great lighting, great special effects. The stage moves. It does all kinds of things. And, you know, the, the, the technical part of the arena is great. It's just too small for this size ship. So what they were doing is they would have a matinee the following day, the, the following day at sea. And like at one o'clock, they'd have a matinee because there's no way everybody could get a place to sit in the 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, whatever they were. No way people could get, you couldn't get everybody in. So they do a matinee uh, the following day at sea, which I appreciate them doing, but that puts a lot more strain on the dancers, the singers. I mean, it's more work for them and more work for the technical guys behind the scenes. Princess Arena, too small for this size ship. You could make that same argument for the dome. The dome is this kind of cool area at the front of the ship. They've made a big deal about this. We did go to one show in the Dome. Again, we had to show up an hour ahead of time to get a seat. I think it only holds 250 people. What's that all about? So there's no way everybody's going to get a chance to go to a to see a show in the Dome. Now, I thought the show was okay. It does a lot of the Cirque du Soleil type of stuff that, uh, you know, where they're 
hanging from the rafters and, you know, the little uh, silk rope stuff and the and acrobatics and that kind of thing. And, and it was and it was a good show. It was interesting. It was good. It's not worth waiting an hour to get in to see. It wasn't that good. I don't know about the dome. I I am. I just don't know if that was a great venue idea. Uh, it's just so small. It just doesn't hold enough people. Now, it's a neat place to go during the day to hang out if you can get in there when it's quiet. they got some really nice loungers in there. You can kind of lay down, and, and you get some sunlight coming in through the dome, and it's, air, you know, it's uh, temperature controlled. It's a great space for that. But it's uh, for an entertainment venue. I, I'm I'm holding back my uh, opinion of that right now. I'm just not sure they've got that quite worked out. And one thing this ship doesn't have, which also puts stress on the rest of the ship, there's no Vista Lounge at the back of the ship. It used to be they did a lot of these activities in the Vista Lounge on Discovery Princess or on the other ships. There is no Vista Lounge on this ship. Like I say, they've got more small venues on here, and a lot of dining venues that they didn't have on the other ships. And I guess that's taking up a lot of the space. The lounge entertainment, we did not get to enjoy very much of. A lot of it is in the piazza. And so a lot of times if you're listening, if you want to go have a drink and you want to listen to some music, you have a couple of choices. You can go to O'Malley's, which they have a, an Irish uh, band at certain times a day. They're playing Irish music in there. Or you can go out to the Piazza area, Bellini's, Crooners, anything. There's also seating around the Piazza if you want to just sit there and listen to some music. But it's very crowded. Again, it's very crowded, very noisy. So it's not a venue where you could sit, say, at the Wheelhouse Bar and have a nice cocktail or sit uh, at Good Spirits and have a nice drink. And maybe you got a guy over here to the side playing the violin or playing the piano. They do have a piano up at Crooners uh, where a guy will play up there, but he's competing with all the noise from the piazza. So it's kind of strange. you got the, all this stuff going on at the piazza, yet you got a guy playing the piano up at Crooners because it's all open to the piazza. For that reason, we found the lounge entertainment to be a little lacking. We thought it was better on Discovery Princess. Let me know in the comments down below. If you've been on Sun Princess, am I out of line? Am I seeing something? Am I just being negative and nitpicky? I really want to know what you think. How did you like Sun Princess? We talked to a lot of people during this 18 days, and we got a lot of mixed reviews. And these are princess faithfuls. These are people that have done a lot of princess cruises. And I would say, I'm just guessing, I'd say about 20% said they loved it. They really liked this new platform. But the rest of the people, meh ambiguous. Not sure. So as far as food and dining goes, that's a separate video in and of itself. Once that video is out, I will put a link up in the corner of this video if you're interested in the food and dining, because we ate at every specialty restaurant. I think we ate at every specialty restaurant on board Sun Princess, some of them a couple of times. So make sure you check out that video if you're interested, because it's just too much to cover in this video. So let's move on to the bars and the lounges. Generally speaking, very long wait times to get a drink order. They did feel understaffed in the bars. It took a while. Usually ended up having to go up to the bar to place an order and bring the drinks back to the table. Uh, Princess does not have canapes at like a happy hour like Holland America does. I think that's something a premium cruise line should consider. They don't even have nuts and chips. They have no snacks at the bars, and yet they're charging sometimes upward of 15 as much as $20 for a cocktail, and you can't get chips or nuts at the bar. I thought that was a little bit cheap, and I think that uh, I think a premium cruise line should have that. Honestly, I just do. Uh, now, they did have bottles of water available at the bars. They still have plastic bottles of water, which I appreciate. I like that. Some cruise lines are going through this, you know, 
virtue signaling where they don't want to have plastic bottles. We experienced this on Silver Sea. Now you get a metal uh, container that you fill up from a a refillable station, and it's their way of saying, oh, plastic's bad, it's going to kill the planet. I like the fact that Princess still gives plastic bottles. Bars overall are smaller than what you'll see on the other ships. Uh, they're very crowded and very noisy because of the piazza, because they open up to the piazza, and the piazza is being used all the time for some kind of entertainment. I already told you about the Good Spirits Bar. It's very small, very intimate, very quiet but it's tiny, only holds like 40 people. Eh, not great. The Cascade Bar up in the dome, right next to the dome or behind the dome, is another nice space, but it kind of lacks any atmosphere. It, it has windows opening out to the ocean that you can see, and it's got this interesting little waterfall feature. But other than that, it's kind of blah. It just doesn't I don't know, it just, you don't go in there and think, oh, this is a place I want to sit and spend some time. So I think they could re, I don't know, maybe it's just me. The Wakeview Bar on Deck 8 aft is outdoors. So if you want a good place to go, maybe watch a sunset, sit outside, have a cocktail, the Lakeview Bar is nice. A little hard to get to. You kind of have to walk through part of Horizon's dining room to get to it, unless you go all the way to the back of the ship, take one of those aft elevators down to Deck 8. Then you can get to the Lakeview Bar without walking through Horizon's dining room. Crooners always crowded and noisy. Bellinis always crowded and noisy. The way they've done the seating in some of these bars, it's like they expect you to be part of a large group. They have seats that are, you know hold 10, 15 people around a table. So they, they, I guess they either think you're sailing with a large group of people or that if you're a couple, you want to join a large group of people. And I should have pointed this out at the very beginning. We review these cruise ships for adult couples, not families, not groups. Me and Ricky, we want to go on a cruise. What's it like for an adult couple to enjoy. And I don't think Princess really focused on couples. They focused on groups and big families. That's just my opinion, because a lot of the seating is so large that, you know, maybe Ricky and I just want to go have a drink at night and sit there and talk as a couple. And there's not many places to do that. Not that many two-top tables. They're mostly these big tables, like in Bellini's. They have a few two-top tables, but they're always full. Or you can sit around the bar. That's just my observation. I always felt like we had a hard time finding a place for just two people to sit. So let's talk about the staff and the crew. Overall, in general, Excellent, as you would expect. Corinne, our cruise director, was very funny, very personable, did a great job. We thought one of the better cruise directors that we've had, maybe the best cruise director we've ever had on Princess, for sure. Our stateroom attendant, Michael, first class. One of the best stateroom attendants we've ever had. He was there anytime we needed him. He was always out in the hall. He did not have an assistant. He was doing everything by himself. And to Princess credit, you do get two stateroom services per day, in the morning and in the evening, like a turndown service. And we always had clean towels. The room was always clean. Michael did an excellent job. Very nice. Always happy. Always smiling. Always called us by name. And since we did have an extra couple of days on this cruise, and by the way, the cruise was extended by Princess, and they did not charge you those extra two days of gratuities, and they did not charge you for Wi-Fi. They, you know, I think the way Princess handled the unexpected two extra days at sea was very, very well done. I thought they handled it very professionally. Uh, they did a pretty good job of keeping everybody updated and informed on what was going on. And they didn't make people pay an additional two days of gratuities or additional two days of Wi-Fi or the premium package. The premium package was still intact. You didn't have to pay $90 per person for an extra two days. So good job on Princess for that. Since they did not charge those extra two days of gratuity, we did give Michael some extra at the end in cash just because we felt like, you know, it's not fair that he didn't get a little bit extra kick. Uh, Natalia at Kai Sushi, 
very friendly, very nice. We did have some issues with Kai Sushi, but nothing related to her. This is a policy issue, and we'll talk about that in our food and dining review. So make sure you check that video out up in the corner or at the end of this video in the description. But Natalia, uh, she's kind of the manager there at Kai Sushi, did an excellent job. Uh, guest services, I went to guest services several times on this cruise, and always had a good experience. They were super friendly, very helpful, and I thought they did a pretty good job. It's not a great space for guest services. It's kind of right off of an elevator lobby. So if there's a line, the line kind of extends out into that elevator lobby. It was just not a very well-designed area for guest services. But they would come out, guest services staff would come out into that elevator lobby with like an iPad thing, and they would do what they could to help people out there. I thought that was excellent. I was very impressed with guest services. They took care of everything uh, that we needed done. Uh, the only thing that hasn't been done so far is we've been back now a couple of weeks, and I still haven't gotten a final folio. I know I had about $185 to $190 of refundable shipboard credit. I have not received that refund yet, and I have not received a final folio. I know a lot of you put in comments on my last video saying, oh, you'll get a folio in the email uh, you know, a few days after you get back, and uh, they'll refund it back to the credit card and all that. Hasn't happened yet. It's been over two weeks since we've been back. So let me know in the comments down below. I don't even know who to contact about this. It seems to me like their website should be designed so that if I've been on a cruise, I could go to the website and I should be able to download my folio from the last cruise. But if I go to the website, it doesn't even show this last cruise. Don't know what to do about that. I, you know, maybe I can reach out to Princess and ask him, but you shouldn't have to. I, I thought I would just get a refund and maybe I will. And maybe it will show up in another week or two. I don't know. I'm going to end by talking about the Princess Premier Package. I promised you in earlier videos I was going to review this Princess Premier Package. And the new Premier Package is $90 per day per person. Now, let me tell you what that includes. That covers all of your gratuities. And the gratuities are $18 per day per person for a Cabana Mini Suite. Depends on your category as to how much you pay per day for gratuities. It also covers all your beer, wine, liquor, cocktails, soft drinks, bottled water. All of that is included. Now, that's cocktails up to $20 each. And yes, there are some cocktails that are over $20. If the cocktail is over $20, you simply pay the difference. It does not include, to my knowledge, onboard liquor in your stateroom. So, for example, if you go to the onboard liquor store and you buy a bottle of liquor, it seems to me like if you have the Premier Package, you should be able to take that back to your stateroom to enjoy. Because you've paid for it, and you're getting all your liquor complimentary or included in the Premier pa Package anyway. I'd like to see them implement that policy, that if you have the Premier Package and you buy a bottle of liquor that you want to enjoy in your stateroom, you should be able to do that rather than wait till the end of the cruise to take it home with you. Uh, it does include, I, th I think I already mentioned, includes bottled water, juices, smoothies. Uh, it also includes what they call premium desserts. Now, or gelato, if you go to the gel gelateria on deck, Five is it, I believe? Uh, or I'm sorry, Deck 7. If you go to the Gelateria, Deck 7 is just forward of the Piazza. Uh, all your gelato is included in that. And those range, I think, from $2.50 for one scoop all the way up to four fifty for three scoops or something like that. But you, you can have as much of that as you want. The premium desserts are up on Deck 17 out by the pool. And these are these tall kind of like a parfait glass filled with ice cream and different stuff. They have like five or six different premium desserts. They also have some really good looking cakes. I did, We didn't try the cakes, but the ice cream desserts, I did have a couple and they were very good. They also have this thing called Princess Prizes, which I didn't understand what it was. I didn't think it had any real value to it. 
But basically, uh, you may come back to your stateroom and you will receive some just random gift or prize. It doesn't happen all the time. It's not guaranteed. Uh, but we did come back to the stateroom one night on the last night of the cruise. And when you approach your door, the little panel was lit up and it kind of, I wish I'd gotten some video or a picture of it, but basically it said, congratulations, you've won a princess prize. Now I got, Ricky didn't get anything, I got $250 shipboard credit. I was never expen expecting that. I mean, I didn't, you know, I thought a princess prize would be a keychain. That you know, the, I got $250 of shipboard credit. I ended up getting a, a pedicure, and then we went down to the shops and bought a jacket and a few other ship. You can see one of my ship models over here of the Sun Princess. So you, you know, they're going to get it right back because it's not refundable. This is part of the non-refundable shipboard credit. There's refundable. There's non-refundable. This is non-refundable. And I think we were able to spend all but maybe 30 or $40. There just wasn't anything left for us to buy. It also covers your Wi-Fi. Up to four devices per person for that $90 per day. All your specialty dining. Now, I say all your specialty dining. They say unlimited specialty dining. Not really unlimited. Okay, it's not really. I'll talk about that in my dining video, so make sure you watch that. But you do get to dine at Crown Grill, Sabatini's, The Catch uh, by Rudy, Umai Teppanyaki, or Umai Hot Pot, and Kai Sushi, with some restrictions on Kai Sushi. You also get complimentary casual dining. They say unlimited casual dining, but it's not unlimited. But that would be Alfredo's Pizza, and O'Malley's. And if you want to know why it's not unlimited, watch my dining video and I'll explain it in more detail. If you add all that together, especially with the gratuities, the Wi-Fi, the unlimited specialty dining, it's a it's a good value, I think. Uh, I do think their dining is way overpriced. I think $45 per person for some of these venues is a little overpriced. But I think if with cocktails and everything, I, yeah, I think it's probably worth the $90 per day. I think it's a good value, especially when you factor in the gratuities, the Wi-Fi, and all of that other stuff. So overall, what do we think of Sun Princess? Well, I'll tell you, um, as an adult couple, I don't know that this is our favorite ship for a mega ship. It it's just a little too crowded and a little too noisy. I think it, we love Princess, don't get me wrong. We love their service. We love the entertainment. We love everything about it, except we just found the ship a little too crowded. I will also mention there were only like eight or nine children on board this ship during this transatlantic sailing. And I was trying to imagine, what is this ship going to be like in the Caribbean? with 4,500 people, 600 of them, kids running around. I, I couldn't even fathom how that would completely change the dynamic of that ship as far as the noise level and the chaos. I prefer Discovery Princess. I prefer that uh, platform as opposed to Sun Princess. For me, that's just me. You let me know in the comments down below what you think, because this is the first Princess Cruise we've ever been on where we felt like it was so it was so crowded we didn't want to get out of our stateroom. We just wanted to stay in our cabana mini suite, which is very nice, and read or watch TV or enjoy the suite itself and just avoid the crowd. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, I would ask your help with something. We are trying to build up our subscribers. So if you if you have a second, please click that little subscribe button down below. Don't forget the notification bell. That way YouTube lets you know when we come out with a new video. More importantly, if you enjoyed this video, got any value out of it, do me a favor, click the like button. That is because it really helps our YouTube rankings really does make a difference when you just click the little thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, we'll have more coming. Make sure you wait for the dining video. I think you're going to enjoy it. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments section down below. And until we see you on the next video, 
smooth sailing.